Hey everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs. In this video, I'm going to review last night's game between Montreal Canadiens and the Edmonton Oilers. And as you can see, I'm wearing black, so it wasn't a win. So Edmonton beats Montreal 4-1 to one in a game that uh, it was a better game for Montreal than the previous few. And um, looked like even Montreal might be able to pull it out until, of course, the uh, third period. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to tell you all about it. I got all the stats from the game. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the game um, and that kind of stuff. So before we get to that, if you're a Habs fan like I am and you want to see more videos like this, of course not losses, we want to see more wins, uh, subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That's going to get you your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge right here at Talking Habs. Let's get into this game. So, like I said now, the game started out better for Montreal than maybe even we... I was expecting, let's put it that way. So they came out, they played well, uh, they kept it close. Now, there was a goal in the first period by Connor McDavid, but it was called back uh, due to goalie interference. But on that play, Carey Price gets injured. He gets, uh, what happens is, um, see, uh, Chason was the player that was in front of the net. So McDavid took a shot somewhere from around the uh, blue line. And in the screening, Price, Jason, he, I don't know what he hits him with, but he hits Price in the head. You can see Price's head goes back. He recovers and he actually looked fine and uh, then didn't come out for the second period. And it turns out he's got a concussion from that. Uh, he's out at least one week. So, um, yeah. So the goal was called back for goalie interference and uh, we're down a goalie. So uh, on that note, um, Primo, Caden Primo, uh, it was already on the taxi squad, so he'll be uh, the backup, and apparently he will get into one of the two back-to-back -back games uh, Friday, Saturday. So we'll see him do that, and uh, imagine McNiven or Lindgren will get called up to the taxi squad. No, there isn't enough room uh, money-wise now for, for Cole Caulfield, because there is an injury, uh, but... There's no room because it's a goalie, so now Primo has to be brought onto the team, so that's his money, and then, anyways, there's just not enough room for, for Caulfield yet, so don't get, don't, don't get all excited uh, that Caulfield's coming up. Um, I believe when he said there's going to have to be an injury, he did mean, I, I, to, I do believe, to a forward or even a defenseman, but to a skater. All right, so uh, no scoring in the first period. It turns out, right? Goal is called back, no scoring. 0-0, zero, zero, second period. And then at 6.46, we do get a goal. Um, surprise, that one didn't get called back. Uh, so Eric Stahl, and he, he directs the puck into... Um, for, and he was at the side of the net. Okay, here's what happens. I think Perry on the left side, he's got the puck in the corner, comes out. Uh, per, uh, Stahl kind of going in towards the net. Perry passes the puck, and Stahl just... He sticks his skate out and redirects it in. Um, was there a kicking motion? No, not a distinct one, but it's it's clear he redirects that. I don't think you're allowed to redirect it. If it goes off your skate and goes in, that's fine, but as soon as you redirect or kick it at all, it's uh, not a goal. So, um, looking at it, the replay, okay, this is going to get called back, but Edmonton coach, uh, what's it, uh, Dave Tibbet, he, uh, no challenge. No challenge. And then apparently it was heard, Dave Tippett was heard to say, um, ah, let's give him that goal. They can't score any other way. Uh, we got this, boys. Don't worry about it. So they didn't, anyways, they didn't challenge. And um, I'm surprised they didn't challenge. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't challenge. And uh, yeah. So goal is good. They dropped the puck. Goal is good. Uh, and that's it for, this, for the scoring. So Montreal's up. Um, one nothing, and it's two periods, and they're up one nothing, and it looks like, well, you know, the way they've been playing against Edmonton, keeping McDavid and Drysaddle off the board, this is going to continue great. It doesn't go that way. Uh, Ten forty nine into the third, uh, Ethan Bear gets his first goal again. First goal, you want it? You need a goal? Just come to Montreal or play against Montreal. Uh, just let them know, and they're going to make it, an arrangement for it. So uh, Bear from McDavid and Paul Yarvey. So the Oilers, they're buzzing the net, literally buzzing around, taking shots left and right. Habs players just standing around smoking. It's like, hey, it looks like the Oilers are, is that McDavid? Um, 
And and that happens until Bear gets the puck in the slot, fires past Allen, that's it. And I believe it's McDavid from behind the net gets him the puck. So, so the guy, it was right, it was McDavid. So it's uh, tied up. Mm. Oh, no, it's tied up. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it gets worse. So uh, next goal, 15-11. So basically under five minutes later, McDavid gets his 24th unassisted. And it happens a lot of this. Center, I, some are in the neutral zone anyway. McDavid says to his, uh, just says to somebody, here, hold my beer. He grabs a loose puck and he just drives the net, splitting uh, Petrie and Edmondson like a hot knife through butter because... Uh, the two guys, there's no way he should have gotten through, got went through them like like they weren't there. Turnstyled Edmondson and Petrie tried to check him with his stick. Like, really? You're gonna stop McDavid in full stride with with his with your stick? Like seriously? Wow. But that's what happened, guys. So uh now it's uh two one. And don't get any better. A little over two minutes later. McDavid again. McDavid said, you know what? I haven't scored in five games. For, uh, yeah, that's going to stop. And um, he springs Pugliarvi free with a pass from, I think he was in, uh, just on in their defensive, just around the line anyway. And he springs, uh, he might have been just over. He springs, he had to actually, it would have been a two-line pass, right? Yeah, so he springs Pugliarvi free with a pass. Pugliarvi just races in with his, biting his tongue. And... Um, I, and he kind of fires. It looked kind of like a knuckleballer thing. It was a spinning puck, or, and uh, he beats he beats Allen with the wrist shot, and that's it. So that's three to one, and the game's out. It that's it. And then a minute later, Shore, Yamamoto, and Russell get a um, an empty netter, and that just uh, that was it. So stats on the game, Price. Seven of seven shots. He was perfect for a thousand price. Didn't give up anything. But it was really early on in the game. He stayed through the whole period. So he finished off the period and did not look like there was a problem. But obviously, uh, was Jeff was telling me, probably had some neck pain in the intermission and they put him on the protocol. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. It didn't look, honestly, it didn't look like anything serious enough to cause a concussion. But. It did. Allen went 25 of 28 for an 893 save percentage. Smith was 22 of 23 for a 957 save percentage. They can't seem to stall, solve Smith. But then again, they can't seem to score against anybody right now, so it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, there's stats for that. Uh, shots on goal 23 for Montreal, 36 for Edmonton. Face offs 47% for Montreal, 53% for Edmonton. So another game where. Being on the faceoffs. Power play 0 for 2 for Montreal, 0 for 4 for Edmonton. So Montreal's PK was good. I guess something was good. Uh, hits, 28 hits for Montreal, 39 hits for Edmonton, which is odd because I think Edmonton controlled the puck mostly. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but so it would be odd if, that they have more hits, but that's the way it is. Stinkers of the game, the D was sucky. The D was sucky. Um, I don't know any other way to put it. The D was sucky. Um, I want to say Drouin again, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just piling on. Um, I didn't notice him a lot, except for a couple of chances he had. That was it. I didn't really notice Drouin on the ice a lot. He was kind of invisible. That's why I put him up there, but maybe I'm overdoing it. Anyway, um, I, didn't, I don't have any stars of the game because literally there were none. The only thing you could say, um, Allen gave it his all. And uh, like every game, like every game, Josh Anderson still out there trying, working, like the only one, and it's kind of sad, uh, but I didn't have any stars of the game. Um, just before we get farther down, I want to remind, or just let everybody know, we're doing a pre-game show before the game tomorrow. Game is at a 10 o'clock, so it's a late start. We're going to do an 8 o'clock pre-game show uh, panel discussion with uh, at least three guests. I, I have two at least confirmed. <laughs> so it'll be three, four, maybe five of us talking about what's going on with the Habs, what's wrong with them, what we think, what we think they need to do, that kind of stuff. So that's pregame show starting at 8, and then there's the live cast hangout at 9.45, and hopefully there's enough people still interested in watching the Habs that there'll be people in the room. Uh, okay, so my questions for this game. Um, 
Is Ducharme the coach, or is he coaching? Because listen, everything I read, this is not does not look like Ducharme coach team. So this is not what I was expecting from what I heard of how he coaches. This is not what we're seeing. So is somebody else pulling the strings, and is he does he have full authority to make changes, or is somebody I want to say Mark Bergevin? Overruling on certain things, how things are going to happen, who's going to be in the lineup. Um, I, 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 that question has to be out there is if Ducharme is really the coach or not. 12 goals in their last eight games. That's all that they have scored in their last eight games. 12 goals. You're not going to win too many freaking games with 12 goals scored in eight games. Not at all. That's literally 1.5 goals a game. Uh, let that sink in. Habs need a game breaker. It always comes back to that. And this is true. Every time you analyze it, what's missing? What's missing is that consistent guy that they can go to that's going to put points up on the board on a consistent basis on most nights, going to get at least an assist. He's going to have numbers. And we're missing that. And it always comes back to that. And we have guys that I think will end up being that in the next year, two years, three years. We don't have one right now. And until we do, not going to win. Montreal might be the worst team down the middle in the North Division. And um, I, I mean, it's not necessarily a knock on them. It's uh, Don't forget, got Suzuki and KK. They're young. They're learning. We went all in too quickly on them. And that's that's a lesson learned. So considering how Stahl is playing, considering Deneau's, like look at their, their goals totals, right? Uh, Nick is the only one with a decent number. Eight, and then um, Stahl has two while he's here. Evans has two while he's here. I forgot to add Evans into that. Evans has two. Um, Deneau has four, and that leaves KK with five. That's uh, those numbers aren't gonna overwhelm everybody, anybody, and that's those numbers aren't winning the middle. So right now, Montreal cannot win the middle, and that's that's. That's what's the, one of the things going wrong here. They're probably the worst team in the, in the uh, North Division down the middle. And that's a big problem. Um, here's something interesting. There's new creativity on the power play. Because, you know, the power play has been really sucky. Then, you know, again, another power, no power play goals. It's been like two goals in the last probably ten games on the power play. So they come up with being... You know, a new look and being really creative on the power play. And the new creative thing they did was really cool is they allow two of the defenders, so the shorthanded team, so they're five guys against four, and they allow two of those four to get behind them for a 2 and all break. Thank God they didn't score. <laughs> Although, would it have made a difference in the end? Probably not. Imagine that. Power play. Penalty kill team gets a two on O break. And not just that, they were like magically appeared behind the defenders, I, uh, the Montreal defenders on the point. Create, but it, listen, it's creative. It's not something I've ever seen before. I mean, I've seen a guy get a breakaway out of a short hat, like, but two guys to be free like that, never seen that before. So listen, it's two on O against. Uh, on the for the PK unit, it's something to look forward to in the future for the power play. Creativity, new creativity. It'll keep us on our toes, and we'll be talking about something. All right, um, time for since um, I already did a preview for tomorrow's game. I'll give you um, my guess the score for the guess the score contest for the next game. If you guess the score of the game and the first goal scorer of the game, and that score can come from either team. Um, you could win a five dollar uh, prize directly into your bank account via Interact. If there are multiple winners, there will be multiple prizes. It's not an easy uh, contest to win. So uh, I'm going to give you mine for Wednesday's game. I have not at all contemplated this. I put it up and I I haven't. So am I confident that there's going to be a turnaround? Nothing really last night gives me confidence. That tomorrow there'll be a turnaround. Nothing. The lines that are up there for tomorrow's game. There's I I I'm just I'm disappointed and I don't know what's going on. 
Um, so we had a four to one game. Uh, the way it is now, Montreal cannot score more than one goal. But I'm going to give them two here. That's where I think they're they're going to be so. Oh, we got to you know, it's got to be a difference. We're going to score more. One more, two. They're going to get two, but Edmonton's going to get four. Edmonton's going to get another four, four to two. First goal scorer haven't really. You know what? Go with the go with the guy that bites his tongue. Our, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say more than that. Uh, Pull Yarvi. Why not? Our special needs hockey player. He's going to get the first goal, so it's going to be four to four to two. Edmonton. Pull Yarvi with the first goal. That's it. That's all. Let me know your guess in the comment section. Um, what do you think the score will be and who gets the first goal for either team? And that's it. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That's down there. That'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talk at Habs. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please stay safe out there. See you next video. Peace out, y'all. Bye, everybody.